you mentioned the budget. Yeah, I know uh, I read and uh, I know it was a small budget, but it doesn't show. So you really have to, uh, it looks great actually. Do you think it has to do with the control of uh, set, lighting? Uh, or yeah. The, yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, we had, um, we had a really great team, you know, they, I think the key thing was the, that every kind of head of department, so like the cinematographer, the production designer, the makeup designer, I feel like they all felt like they were kind of, they were, we were all a team trying to make something great together. Do you know, it wasn't kind of, because, you know, we weren't, they weren't getting paid the big books to like work on this movie. So it was like, it was, they were picking this project because it was a passion project for them and they wanted to make something that looked good and it, and it felt like a proper movie. So I think it was down to really all the work of, you know, all of those people and, and the fact that they were really kind of giving it their all and they were really passionate and they, you know, weren't kind of, um, you know, they didn't let the budget kind of pull them down. I think everyone just tried to deliver the best that they could with what they had. And we were, yeah, we were strategic about it as well. Do you know, it was kind of, if you want to have a big bonfire uh, that we're lighting up really with actual fire um, you have to then cut corners elsewhere where you might you know you might lose kind of some fancier equipment you might want or a drone or this thing or that thing so it was, you know we just paired everything back and I think that helped us just achieve then what we got on screen in the end. How much is uh, You're Not My Mother best, be, based on a popular tales or folklore or superstition yeah. or tradition in Ireland? Yes, yeah, I think, you know, it was it was predominantly based on the changeling mythology in Ireland. So we have a whole kind of, um, there's a whole other world in Irish folklore where it's populated by Anshi, which are the fairy folk, or kind of fairies. Um, and so there's a changeling mythology is that a fairy will come and swap uh, somebody for one of their own and they'll take the human to their world. And traditionally it's babies, but I think there was, you know, there's a lot of, count of accounts in Ireland where it was adults as well. And that particular myth I found really interesting because I wanted to write a story about kind of mental illness in a family and how, you know, when somebody's unwell, they, they aren't themselves and how you kind of deal with that. And then the, so the changeling myth felt like it was a great um, way to tell that story in a kind of a, a supernatural and mystical way. Um, so yeah, it was a, uh, but there's so much in Irish folklore. I feel like there's so many movies you could make from all the kind of characters and different creatures that we have in our, in our folklore. Also, well, uh, Char, uh, in a way she, she has to become an adult really fast or due to the mother situation without giving away much, could you tell us what's a, Charles' biggest challenge within growing up in that environment? Yeah, you know, I think it's it's really, yeah, we wanted to show, we, we wanted to kind of capture the feeling, I suppose, of being a young person coming of age in a family where um, a parent isn't there for you or they're not taking care of you or they, you know, and at times they can even be frightening or the, the house you're in doesn't feel safe. Um, so that was kind of our lead, you know, that was always what we wanted to capture in tone and feeling. And, you know, I think for Shar, it definitely is like at the beginning of the film, she's almost a caretaker to um, <coughs> her mother, but also her grandmother in a way, because her grandmother's kind of incapacitated. So she doesn't really have anyone caring for her. Um, and then as the film evolves it is a real feeling of you know when you're that age in a house like that there is no escape you can't really leave because you don't have any way to be independent on your own so you just have to kind of endure an environment that's very inhospitable to you um so yeah I think um yeah I don't know if that answers your question but <laughs> <laughs> sorry I did does that answer your question yeah, of course, it's great. <laughs> uh, tell me a little, how did you go from a short, this is your first feature. Mm -hmm. I know you did a short, it was very successful, and then you just jump into, I guess this is what you love to do. <laughs> yes, definitely, yeah. I think um, Cat Calls was my short film, and that was uh, that was my first actual horror 
film project that I did because in college they really turned us off doing horror movies because they weren't seen as kind of uh, the kinds of films that would get you into film festivals but I think that yeah but it was funny because that like I found the complete opposite with Cat Calls I you know we had such an amazing festival run and I think the horror genre film festivals are so um, welcoming you know they're very and you know there's just people who at those festivals who are so passionate about horror movies um so you know I've always loved horror I've always been a massive horror fan and it's always been something that I've loved ever since I was a kid so I always I always felt really at home in that genre and and it was uh you know I I feel like it's a genre where you can get really creative and let your imagination run wild so when it came to my feature, I knew that it was going to be horror as well. Although it's quite, it's uh, you are not my mother. Quite different tonally, I think, to Cat Calls. Cat Calls is a bit more tongue in cheek and kind of fun um, movie. 